Hello, hello. So let me just get this set up. Let's take it a little bit higher. How's that looking? Okay. Alright, I'm just going to hold on for a minute while we see if anyone's able to join. Um, so I'm going to be working on an art journal page today. I'm going to be doing the Art Daily Cafe April Challenge, um, which has the theme of pink and gratitude, um, which I think is really important at the minute. So before I waffle on, I'll just wait and see if anyone can join live. Um, and then we'll get started. Where are we? So I am a little bit late. There we go. Someone's joining in. I think that was Cleo just popping in. I think someone else came in as well. Hello, Cleo. Yes, it is you. Hi. <laughs> I'm just going to hold on a sec, see if anyone else wants to join live so they can see from the beginning. And I shall start. Oh, I've got loads of stuff on my desk, so let me organise. It was a bit last minute, so I've just kind of chucked everything on the desk. <laughs> so let's tidy myself up a bit. Hello, Hazel. Okay, looks like people are joining now, so that's good. So I'm just going to get some colours out while I'm waiting on you. Yeah, lots of pink today. Um... Okay, so I'll just start again just to tell you. So I'm doing the um, Art Daily Cafe challenge for April, Finnebear's Art Cafe. Um, and the theme this month is pink for the colour. And the theme is gratitude. So things we are grateful for. Hi, Hazel. Oh, lovely glad you're at home that's good um so i think being grateful for things is a very important thing that we reflect upon at the moment there's there's so much to be grateful for and it can be in the simplest of pleasures as uh, finnebear has written on the post you know just finding simple pleasures or remembering simple pleasures that we had before uh, for instance i'm missing going for my coffee with my partner or, you know, little simple things like that, seeing our friends and family and loved ones. Um, so I had a thing, pink, and the thing that pops straight to my head, my favourite thing that is pink, <laughs> is blossom. I took these photos near our house recently, um, and I thought I would crack out my art journal again and do something with these. Might be both photos, one or the other, I don't know yet. Might cut just this piece we'll see what happens so i've covered lots of pink things i wanted to try and use ink today i don't use inks as much as paints lately so i thought we'd crack open the ink so i've got my art journal here this is a dina oh, i always get mixed up dina wakely journal dina wakely i want to say dina wakely yeah it's the dilutions journal ranger journal i'm sorry i'm talking rubbish <laughs> Hello everyone. I'm going to pronounce your name wrong, I know. God leave. I'm really sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Thank you for joining us. Um what's that? My little pens. So these are Vicky Bouton. Bouton. I say that different every time I say it. Bouton watercolour markers and I love them. They're really cool. So great for creating backgrounds. Um, so first of all, is when I'm doing a double spread, I try and pick the same paper. So, oh, I'm getting a phone call. Excuse that. I hope it didn't interrupt the feed. Let me turn the vibrate off as well. Sorry about that. Oh, my photos. Yes. Blossom. Yeah, I really like this. This is the church in town near where we live and it has lovely stained glass. This is a really old window. And then I took a close-up one. So I want to use those. So firstly, because I'm going to be using ink, it's very, very wet. I want to um, prep my page with some white gesso. Now this has gone very thick. So I'm just going to put the lid on properly on this one. Oh no, it's fine. It just looked really thick. 
okay so i'm going to i want a very soft feel today so i am going to use white gesso um it does soften your colors a little bit um gesso is semi porous so it will um soak in some of the ink it's not a gel it's not going to resist it it will um soak some of that up um especially if you leave it wet so it's important to dry well once we put it on i'm not going to worry too much this is my art journal i don't mind if some pages are a bit messy hello tina um so a little bit seeps through i'm okay with that the spine is the important part and um, if you get that too wet you're going to lose the integrity of your book so that's a particularly important part to pay attention to um so yeah it will soften the colors when you use white gesso um if you want to keep the color bold um best probably to go with a clear gesso or be prepared to do a few layers dry and add more and build up your intensity hello karina right so that's that so this is just going to stop my ink soaking into my page too much and wasting lots of expensive materials and protect the pages that are either side um, when using ink as well especially if you're going to spray it's a good idea if you put something in between the pages like some plastic um, to stop that going on to the next pages i'm going to use a paintbrush today i think though so i'm not so concerned so let's give that a quick dry first hello kasha kasha could you be amazing and share it to the group for me please that would be really helpful if you have a moment i know you're busy 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 bee marking still i think but if you have a chance that would be good <clears throat> um, I've put the link to the Art Daily Cafe group on this post and also on the event. So if you want to give this a go yourself and enter over on there, that would be really good. Um, there's some great challenges about the Art Daily Cafe is one I like to do a lot. Um, there's lots of different ones. If you look back at our events, you'll see other ones I've done. Um, so there's challenges like Merma's Small Art, their cafe there. Um, there's our own challenges, like Ali's colour challenge. Or I need to do my own monthly challenge or bi-monthly challenge. I forget to do it a lot of the time. And there's, yeah, lots of challenges around. And... They're really good to um, res by restricting you to a theme or certain products. I think it really helps your creativity sometimes. A lot of the time we're so sport by what to use, we get a bit bogged down and confused. Right, so I'm going to start with these. That's the markers I showed you. So what I need to do is spritz my page a little bit. This is going to allow the inks to move around. So you just squeeze these, there's a cap here you have to take off and then it clicks in and you just squeeze it and it puts the ink into the barrel. So it's then like a uh, watercolour brush. So I'm just, no science, just adding a bit of these to my page. I'll add a bit more water so this can move around a bit and I'll go in with more colours. just my background I'm not looking for any science here just to get some color down on my page okay and let's spray this get it moving a little bit this is like a kind of canvas paper um, that I'm working on so it will show texture quite nicely I'll get a brush hi Francis 
Oh, this brush is very dry. <laughs> okay, and I can move that colour around some more. Okay, let's get some more inks. So this is Dilusions Rose Quartz. This is a really nice one. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Marie. Oh, lots of people watching today. I love this colour. It's a well rose as it says it's it's not a pink it's not a purple it's a really pretty color actually so let's get some of this down just using a brush um that allows you to be more precise whereas a spray you'll get that spritzed effect obviously and less control with where it goes with a brush you can control that a lot better you can be finer you could use a small brush and you can just have it go where you want um, but you don't get that spritzed look so it depends what feel you want to go for um what else have i got distress oxide picked raspberry this is a really nice color and obviously it's the oxide so we'll get that chalky look i think i'll just do some splats in that one my page is quite wet already so that will start reacting hello linda lots of people on today that's great i think you must have shared for me cash so thank you or anyone else that has see so we're starting to get nice colors going on now and you can really see that canvas uh look to the paper you can see it particularly down here I hope that the light's okay oh hi Michelle all the way from Florida lovely what time is it in Florida then um must be early time we here too must be quite early morning in Florida I think then if I've got my times correct thank you Michelle yeah I'm a pink com I'm converted to pink yeah hi Sally Ann Hi Paul. Oh, I haven't opened this one. A new ink. Ooh. Need a pair of scissors then. So this is gonna be distress spray. It's normal distress, not oxide, in Victorian velvet. Which I ordered by mistake, but it's a happy accident. It's Victorian velvet, it's a lovely colour. There were some more splats for that. So same as oxides, it reacts with water, but you don't get that chalky look because this is not the pigment dye fusion. Okay, I think we've got quite a good lot of colour on there. So let's move all these out of the way. We'll put those back in there. So that's quite a good background we've got oh lots more people coming in uh did i miss very brave background ah mm, you just have to have fun you can always cover bits you don't like hi leanne hello kim hello liz hello siva hello julie wow lots of people watching today that's nice okay i'm going to give a quick dry now that's all reacted quite nicely and I want to make sure before I add any more that this is dry. I don't want my pages to get too wet. This looks pretty, so I don't want anything else I add to mix together with it. Um, if we add wet on wet, it's going to mix together. But if we dry first and then add more, you're going to be able to build layers. So we, I like this layer, so we want to capture that, keep it as it is. You're in the garden lovely yeah it's pink but i was having this conversation with someone yesterday i mean you can see just how many different shades of pink i've got on here i think pink can be for everyone you just need to find the pink that you like so i've got quite muted colors here you can have a very bold pink hello michelle hello chetna yeah, so I think you just need to find the pink that works for you. It can go from very, very pale, sort of um, pastel pink, right up to very bold, kind of fuchsia pinks. There's purpley pinks, reddy pinks. 
just got to find the one you like, I think. Hello, Karen. Okay. So I'm just trying to get this fairly dry now. It doesn't have to be bone dry yet because I'm not sticking anything to it just yet. But I want it fairly dry. Okay. Right, so that's looking quite nice. So here's this page and this page. Very random but pretty. Let's move. Okay, so next I was thinking to add some paints. Of course, my beloved impastos. Here's some different pinks in the ranges. Um, chameleon pink gold. So that's a kind of pinky peachy gold color that could be nice we've got fabric deco shabby velour heather so this is a pinky purple textured paint and then another metallic this is prima sparks hi lisa butterfly spells ignore the orange that's something i've stuck it on so that's a pretty pink metallic so i thought we'd maybe play a bit with these perhaps I think I'll keep these for decorating my embellishments that I'm going to add. So we'll go in with just the sparks for now, just to add a bit of texture and a bit of something else. So I like to kind of use what I'm working on as my canvas, if you like, so I don't waste it if I can. And these are very much kind of paints you want to get just your finger in and work with them like they hold texture very very well um so they are kind of paints you want to just get stuck in with i really must get myself a new white so i'm just going to use my finger you can add water to these um they really do hold texture well they're very very pigmented you don't need much at all and these will work really nicely on this canvas. Can you see how it's picking up that texture really well? And yeah, because they're very pigmented, I could spray these down and get that colour moving around a lot more. We can do that in areas where we're missing some colour. So here, say, and then we can move that around. Um, we need to be careful not to rub too hard on this paper as we'll start rubbing those kind of um, the fibres of the paper away. So just being careful. Okay, I'm keeping it very abstract, I think. Nothing much let's have a bit more on this side okay so yeah i think this is a really great challenge you could always change the color of your very anti-pink but it's a, the theme i think is a great one to try at the moment gratitude you know what what can you find that you're grateful for at the moment because there is a lot to be grateful for you know we've got if you've got your health friends family and like i said my pitch is going to be a blossom so just the simple pleasures we're finding um now we sort of slow down a bit what can we find that we really enjoy that we've perhaps taken granted for before okay that looks good i could use a bit of the white and my white's very thick because i was naughty and didn't put the lid on properly so don't worry it doesn't come like this <laughs> now i've made my white pink let me get that bit out Okay, that will do for my background, I think. Put that on. 
my wipes down here. Hi Monica, hi Charmaine. Thank you everyone for joining. Really nice to see lots of faces and a lot of people I've not seen before actually, so that's good. Welcome, welcome. Right, I'm going to give that dry again. Oops, nearly headbutted the camera. Right, while I do that, I shall show you some bits I've pulled out. So I've got, I used um, the dragonfly from this on a canvas the other day. Uh, which I can show you. Here. So it's like a layerable dragonfly. It's um, a slightly amended version. Is now on... I think it's now on Hobbylicious. Hi Deborah. Deborah and Cleo are in from Hobbylicious. Is that set out yet, the Dragon and Butterfly set, or not quite yet? Uh, it's really lovely. Say so mine's a slightly different version. It's like a the tester version, if you like. There's a, but it's the same idea, a layerable set. Just has some solid pieces and some bits that are like this with the cutouts. So I thought I might use the butterfly from that. I've also got a branch from Hobbylicious, which I thought would go well with the um, blossom. Might use this. Don't know, that's Hobbylicious as well. I've got some, obviously my photos I need to use. I've pulled out some word stickers and things like that. I've got a few bits of ephemera and flower ephemera, things like this. And I've also got some doilies I thought perhaps could use. So let's get this dry and start playing. I love that the impastos just keep all that texture. See where I've just patted with my finger, you can see that so clearly. It's great, and I'm trying to keep it fairly flat because I want to stick on um, stuff to it. But you can really build up um, quite texture look. You can really splat this stuff on, you know, like you would. Um, oil paints or something oh yes it is on the butterflies and dragons set yep so you can go to hobbylicious and find that i will be getting some in myself as well for our store so you can head over to hobbylicious.com and get those now or um say so we'll be getting some and lots of other bits in our store at thompsonscraftsupplies.com and we are open again now we're doing posts once a week i'll be going tomorrow to collect orders as we've had quite a lot again um, and then I'll go next week after that hi Patricia hi Eleanor hi Nicole <laughs> trying to keep up with the comments today very very busy right, I think just this little section right so we might have some doilies I think next right. That's okay. so i need to look at my pictures first and decide if i'm gonna have both i definitely want this one i'll trim that edge off so if you missed the beginning this is my local church has beautiful blossom hello from peru patricia lovely Got lots of international people here today, that's cool. Going global. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the local church and it has these beautiful blossoms outside of it. Hello, Dad. That's my dad there, Chris. <laughs> um, I think, do I just want this one? I think I'm just going to work with that photo today. I'll keep that for something else. Huh, you love the photo. What, this one of the church? You're more than welcome to a copy. I'll send you one. 
No charge. <laughs> Hi Priya. Hello Leslie. Okay, so and now what I do, so you have to count obviously this is gonna bend in, so I try not to go too close to the edge so that if anything doesn't quite stick down right, then it's okay. Thinner things aren't so bad like this. Yeah, sure. If you want one, genuinely, I'm happy to send you one. Just remind me, you know, what my memory is like. Useless. Okay, so maybe something like this. So I'm going to just have a play around now. See what I'm feeling with my little elements. I wanted this butterfly, so let's pull out the big one just for now so I can get a feel of the size so maybe that could sit there I'll take the wings out so with these they have tabs on here so if you push towards the tab and then just pull away you just trim those little bits off after so they're not connected anywhere else so you don't break anything which I love because I hate when that happens very frustrating so that goes on there obviously i need to trim those bits off um let's see what else have i got in here so i've got that branch so what we could do is like mimic the tree continuing like it's carrying on out of the photo perhaps which would mean I wouldn't want that there because I don't want to make one side too heavy and nothing on the other. Oh, I miss more people. Oh, thank you, Margaret. Hello, Ruth. Right, so let's get this out. Um, I've forgotten the name of this one. Is this Blossom Ranch? Yes, I did, Linda. I used a white gesso today because I wanted a soft feel. Um... So I used white gesso. I think, yeah, this is the Hobbylicious Blossom branch, I think it's called. So I'm going to mimic like that's carry on and out of the page. Okay, so um, these are quite dark wood, so you could gesso those with white gesso as well. Um, all the paint I'm using today is quite heavily pigmented, so I'm not going to worry about doing that. Um, I did have this big doily I could put on this side, a piece of that, perhaps. Something like that. So what I'm trying to do now is we want this to be one piece, it's not two separate pages, it's one large piece so we need to make sure that somehow the two sides merge and that they're balanced so if we're doing lots of work here we need to do something there to try and balance it it doesn't have to be a copy of the side but just a bit of balancing okay, maybe some more different color Something like that. I'll have a different colour there. Let's put the same one as that one. So that's helping connect these two. Okay, that looks quite nice. So we're going to start putting some stuff down in a minute. Um, so what else I've got? So I'll think about the words a little bit later on. Oh, I've stuck all my words together. Or I moved everything. Um, mm, mm, mm. any more embellishments? Let's see. Hello, Glenda. How are you? Um, I have got some floral ephemeras and things. Let's have a little look. Pull these out. So these are a mixture. So I've got some. Mm, 
some cocoa vanilla so these are cocoa vanilla these are Paige Evans <laughs> test my memory now Paige Evans Paige Evans that's a cocoa vanilla these ones are Prima and these ones escape my memory <laughs> um Oh, I've forgotten the name of the company. Nope, it's gone out of my head. Sorry, but it's someone else. Anyway, so let's have a little play. If you want to know what it is, I can always message you after. If you really like the look of them. Oh, I don't want that hair. That can go away. Right, let's have a look. So we could again kind of imitate this tree carrying on over here maybe. Again I want to be careful not to get too close to the centre as it would be difficult to fold in. These were quite pretty. These were from the Prima Moonchild collection. I thought they were quite blossomy looking. So we could have some of those maybe coming out from places. I think I'd rather that than those actually. That looks a nice shape. Um, what else have we got? I've got this nice circle. That's from Chamel. Can't remember. The one with the unicorns. <laughs> and that could sit under there. So I'm just having a play with my elements. And if you, once you're happy, it's good if you can take a photo. I say that a lot, but it is really helpful. So you get something looking really nice, you're happy with it. Take it all off to stick it down and you think, oh, nuts, I can't remember where that all went now. Right, I think that's looking good. So let's start sticking. So, what have I got here? This will do. A soft gel. Um matte medium light gel whatever you see it called so the thinner of the gels for thin papers decoupage rice papers so my doilies for example here anything like that this is a gloss one so i want to be careful not to be too heavy-handed because i don't want kind of glossy bits all over my paper Okay, so the doily I can stick right up to the fold. So I'm not too concerned that that's going to get stuck. Okay. And then this one was going to pop out the photo. So we can keep bringing the photo back for reference. But yeah, right there. So these are um very thin but very sticky adhesives or gels so they're great for this sort of material hello stephanie okay so i want to go with this one now and because they're thin as well they're not going to add any body to your page so good for when we fold this up back up into our book okay and then we're gonna have this one on top aren't we it's this kind of collage work as well I like to do kind of collage in my art journals. This one is a bit firmer, so I think I'll use my heavier gel for that. So that's all my thin ones. So I'm going to switch to a thicker gel now, um, just to make sure everything's going to stick. So these would be what are usually called something like heavy body 3D gels. So, uh, no, that's my gesso. 3D 
gel from Prima. It comes in gloss or matte. Uh, I also use Fabrica 3D gel. Just something that's a bit thicker so you can see the consistency is very different. And you wouldn't want to use this on the doilies or tissue paper or something because you would tear it. Um, because it's very thick, it's going to be too brutal for something that delicate. So let's have a look how we wanted this. Like that, I think. So I'm just going to put splots, splots, what does splot mean? Dots on the back. Um, just enough so that we get contact. Let's bring my photo back in, being careful not to get gel on it. It's very annoying getting gel on your photos because it's sticky. You get horrible sticky marks on your photo. There we go, that's that. So, oh, and we had this little blossom peeking out here, didn't we? There. Okay, so you could pop this on some foam dots if you like. Just being careful to remember this is a book that we need to close. Um, it's not on rings, so we don't want to build too much height. I would say the MDF is about the maximum height we want to go, really. And we've got this one here. So you see, because this is a bit thicker, the bend of the book, it's a little bit harder to stick down. So that's why we want something a bit sticky bit stronger for these bits on a normal sort of scrapbook or a card you're you would be fine to stick that down with the thinner gel okay so that's all that side just bring that back make sure that looks right yep okay let's go to this side so we're gonna have this circle Somewhere there. With this little flower on top. Okay, and now I need to tidy up my butterfly. So we just get some scissors and trim those little bits off. Uh, you can pull them, but you might break it. So I just snip them off and there you go. And then it's neat. Right, so let's get these the right way around. That's it. I might put them slightly off, not line them up, so you can see those two layers nice and clearly. So I'm just going to do the same, dot some of this gel on the back. Uh, this is a light board, so it's very, very light. It's the kind of stuff beer mats are made out of so very very light we don't need tons to stick it down just enough okay and we'll pop some oops pop some on top of that stick the second layer so we'll go slightly out of sync so we can see those nice layers. There we go. Pretty, pretty. Right, let's see what else we want. So this looks good, but it needs something more. So I think we need a few more bits here. I've got this nice um, vellum that is uh, from packaging of Prima flowers. They often have these nice kind of papers in there. We could use a bit of this. Tear a strip of that. We could have that coming out somewhere. Something like that. Yeah, that looks nice. We'll stick that down. Hello, Janice. Nice to see lots of people here today. Now, vellum is a little bit tricky to stick down, so um, you want to make sure you've really you know stuck underneath all of that 
because it will if you've got any bits that aren't stuck down it will curl up quite badly so give that a good stick down okay there's something here we need let's have a look what we've got just to join these two together better i have got i don't want to go too close to though um let's see what no that's not the right color Having a play. Oh, what about this? These little buds. Yeah, they look quite nice. Will I be colouring those? What the butterfly? I'm going to colour the butterfly and this branch down here. Yeah. Um, I say you could gesso those. It's a good idea to gesso them. Um, but because I know I'm using quite pigmented paints, quite thick paints, I'm not going to do that today. I'm being a bit lazy. <laughs> oh, this being a pain. Come on. Little fiddly one. Doesn't want to stick. Now I had a few more of those. Can I find them? Let's see. Oh, yeah. There they are. I could bring those down this page like some little petals that fell off. They look like a bit like blossom to me. And this one. There we go. Yeah, I think that's okay. We've got leave space for words. So let's choose the words now and then we'll paint those other bits. So I've got some small stickers. I went through a new Tim Holtz sticker book. It's a really different one. I love it. This is this one called, it's just called Clipping, but it's all different kind of um, vintage text, like book text and all really different it's not so much phrases just it looks like bits out of books and i pulled out some from there that i thought were relevant so we've got true beauty beauty of this life and then this one was very relevant words of love and gratitude because the theme's gratitude remember and a happy place to be so i thought we could use those can you hear the cat There's, i've got this cat <laughs> Oh, he's really crying. I've got this cat around here that stalks me. So I thought we could just sort of jot those around. Very relevant. And I like going... I I do sometimes find churches a bit... Not scary isn't the right word, but... Kind of... They're powerful places, aren't they? You don't have to be religious. I'm not religious. But I find them... Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes make me feel uncomfortable. Um, but this particular church, I do go and sit outside it quite a lot. Um, there's lots of really nice flowers there. So yeah, I do like this place. Right, so that's those. I've got these. Don't think I want to use them. Um, I did find these. I could do real magic and they go nicely because this is the real magic. I could have that on this page. <laughs> Cat. Let's just see how it looks. I will need to put some gel under here. Yeah, that works. Um, these aren't particularly sticky and we're sticking them onto paint which is um, harder to stick to so a little bit of gel would be good yeah it it probably is easier showing and to colour it before you stick it down sometimes when I'm being indecisive I want to stick it down first um, but yes you're right it would be much easier to paint that off the page and then stick it on 
Oh, there's a little dot one there. <laughs> I hit it. Yes, it's just me being awkward. Um, right, that's that. Real magic. I did have this word as well. Beautiful. That could go up there, couldn't it? Actually, that looks quite nice. Up here. Beautiful, lovely, okay. Uh, I don't think I want to add much else. Um, I might do some splatters at the end. So let's take the photo away and colour those pieces now. So let's choose, I'd like something really going to stand out, I think. So I'm going to start with this one, Shabby Blue in Heather. So this is a more of a mauve mauve, do I mean mauve? I think so. Like a purpley colour anyway. But I'm going to layer a pinky colour on the top. So this is, um, these are quite textured paints. So they're really good for dabbing on. And as the name suggests, they give a shabby chic sort of feel. Um, so they do also have rustic paints in their range, which are much more textured. So they're very grainy and used for getting kind of rust effect. Um, but these are sort of in between the normal acrylics and the rustic paints. So slightly textured. Um, it, I think they say they give like a mock, a, a mock, a flock yeah, flock coating. So slightly textured. So I'm going to start with that colour. And then I think I'll add some sparkly paint over the top. So I'm using a small paintbrush so I don't get it everywhere else. And we'll do the butterfly too. So with the butterfly, definitely it would be much easier to do off the page so you could get into those layers easier. But I just like to be awkward. <laughs> um, I did use the, with the dragonfly, I actually kept the bottom layer white and that looked quite nice. Gave a nice contrast to it. So whatever you feel is absolutely fine. I've got quite a small paintbrush so I can work work it in and I've got a messy background so it doesn't matter if a little bit of this goes onto my background I'm not too fussed it's up to you it's your style if you want to be neater that's fine do it off the page and then stick it on and these do dry quite quick these paints so that's that one. Lid. Where's I put the lid? There it is. Hi, Leslie. Bro, right, give that a quick blast. branch as well. It's a bit dark in here now, isn't it? Oops. It's a bit better. It's really bright when I started, so I didn't think I'd need the light on. Hi Kerry. Hi Shweta. you can now see that texture of the paints right so I want a bit of oh, bit shine so we'll go with the butterfly spells I showed you 
Now, mine, bear in mind, I've had these probably four years, so mine are quite thick. When you get them first, they're a lot runnier. I'm just going to put a bit of those over the top. Very shimmery paints. Metallic, shiny paints. Thank you, Kasha. I want to go everywhere. I don't want to cover up that pretty paint I've already got on there. I just want to add some touches. I like to mix contrast together. So matte and shiny paint work really well together for me personally i think they look nice together so we'll just dry that again quickly oops let's make it gone gone <laughs> oh what have i done knock the plug out there we go and again those paints dry very very quick thank you margaret embracing your pinkness yeah, I I actually really quite like pink lately. I think your colour preferences can change with moods and life, you know. If you're happy, you can be pulled to kind of happy colours, I suppose. Um, it depends. It's taste as well, of course. You're going to have things you like and things you don't. But yeah, I do find that what i'm drawn to changes with my moods obviously i was set pink by this challenge so that's a bit different but i have used a lot of pink lately now i'm gonna need something to prop the photo up this side so it's bouncing on the chipboard although actually yeah i'm gonna need something under here to lift that side up so always keep things like this off chipboards, craft boards, anything like that, it's really useful. You can snip it up and build yourself some support to put your work on. Let's see if two is going to be enough. Yep, that's fine. So we'll stick that. Let's just decide where we want the photo. I want it somewhere about there. It's going to support that side. We'll stick this down with the gel. The same gel, the 3D gel I was using. Just make myself a little sandwich. <laughs> okay. And some gel onto this bit where the photo is going. And then just plonk that on. So I've left a gap so that when I close my book, the photo is not going to catch and get bent or stop my book closing properly. Because I have got a little bit of height there, remember. So I need a little bit of room to be able to shut that. Okay. We're almost done. I think... I'd like to go with some a different colour, just for some splatters, I think. Um, I don't want to do black. I think I'd like silver. Do I have some silver paint? Let's see. Um, silver. Yes, I do. So, Fabrica. So, these are the normal metallic paints. We can have a get into there very very shiny um when we're doing splatters make sure we're covering up anything we don't want to get splattered so i don't want my photo splattered um anything else i don't mind actually so just cover my photo i'll put a little bit of paint onto my mat just about that much onto my mat to the side and I'm going to water that down with my water spray. Oops, 
I'm just going to tap that on. So bigger splatters if you do it like this, or if you want finer ones, more controlled tapping with something over the top of the brush. This is a good splattery brush because it's really bendy. <laughs> it's just a cheap rubbish brush, but it's good for this actually. I'll have to remember that one. I don't know where I acquire some of these brushes from. I think I'm just going to say to everyone now, when they say, what do you want for a present? I'll just say I'm quite happy with paint brushes, actually. I've got a bit of a, a thing for paint brushes. Hi, Isabel. I'll just put that in my water pot and it wasn't even dirty. Oh, well, it can have a wash. Okay, and I think we are done. Let me have a quick look. Take that away. Get a little bit there. Yeah, so I think that'll do. I should probably put a little bit of gel under those little stickers. I might have to do that later. So here is my gratitude pink themed uh, art journal page. So pop over to the Finna Bear Art Daily Cafe and give the challenge a go yourself. So here's mine. I've got Hobbylicious MDFs and craft boards. I've got doilies. I've got Prima Ephemera. I have Vicky Bouton Ephemera. I have this is Doodlebug Word. These were American Craft Stickers. Tim Holtz Mini Stickers. And this is a bit of vellum from a Prima Flower Pack. Background with different inks. Uh, Vicky Bouton Watercolor Markers. Uh, blah, 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 Prima Impasto Paints. And I think think that was it so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it it was lovely to see everyone here and um yeah give project a go yourself with gratitude as the theme lots to be grateful for folks so stay safe and be happy Bye bye